All about Symbian and Mobile Industry Review. So uh, here we are looking at the table here with a whole load of uh, components from the Wild Ducks project. And let's get someone who really knows what he's talking about to talk us through what everything on the table here is. Hi. So I'll start with the Beagle board first. So we, this is, this is ac the actual microcontroller and the board which we are running Symbian on. Now we had to buy a little extension for that, which you see below. This is actually called the Zippy extension and you get it there on the BeagleBoard website, BeagleBoard Zippy Ethernet combo. We added that to get one more serial port on the board as well as Ethernet. And then here goes the modem. This is the modem what we got from Round Solutions. So their website, you can go and order there straight away. They ship it to you, they ship it the full package with cables, the modem, and an antenna. So you, you kind of get going with that. You have a serial port to connect this through your PC and try it out first. The SIM card goes there, so the SIM card goes here. The, this is the place of the SIM card, where the SIM card goes. It's actually a 3G modem, so you have a data connectivity as well. So if you connect with the Beagle board, you can even browse and do demos. So what we had to do is we had to take out audio out. So we have our speakers connected through this and a small mic. If you connect it with the PC for now and try making calls, you can actually make a call talking through the mic and you hear through the speakers. Moving ahead, the plan is that we'll use this cable to connect the board with the Beagle board. So this is how it connects here. This is how the extension what we bought, the Zippy Ethernet combo, comes handy because now we have two ports which you can connect it here and the other port is used to connect the Beagle board from the PC. We have an HDMI out here on the Beagle board what we use to connect the board through the monitor and there's where we see Symbian and Symbian flag. Uh, so what we're going to see here is Symbian 2 actually booting on the Wild Ducks project off the Beagle board. It will be onto that monitor over there. So this is a chance to see Symbian 2 actually booting up on this hardware, which is very exciting. The light, light's coming on, so I'm, I'm guessing that the boot time of this particular device is not that stellar, but uh, we can see the activity is just going on in the background right now. Uh, we'll just have to be patient while things start up. We'll have to connect the Beagle board from the PC through the USB to serial converter. Then what we do that we copy our image onto the SD card and from there to the RAM. Because we still don't have a lot of drivers and that's why we're looking for the community to support us to enable many more basic stuff on the Beagle board so that makes it easy to work with. But for now it's actually we copy the image from the SD card to RAM. That takes a while because it's a big image. We'll have to wait for that then to boot up and then you get something on the screen. So uh, what we're seeing here, of course, is the Wild Ducks project. Now, you know, you hear all the time about how Symbian's open source, that anyone can use the code. But you sort of go, yeah, the only Symbian device you ever see are from Nokia or from the other big manufacturers. So this is an actual Symbian device that anyone could make. All you need are, you know, a few soldering skills, a credit card to purchase a Beagle board, and, uh, I suspect to some software expertise. But there'll be instructions, so you'll be able to do this yourself. And quite frankly, seeing that kind of open source and both on the software and on the hardware is very cool indeed because you just don't see it anywhere else. There's been various projects and this is with Symbian. And bear in mind, this is the same Symbian that runs on your standard Nokia phone that runs on more than 300 million devices. And to see it is the real evidence of the transformation of Symbian from a sort of monolithic conservative company into a forward thinking, completely open company. And I can't think of a better example to show right now than this. It, it, it doesn't really fit in your pocket, but... I just uh, don't, I don't really like the form factor. No, I, I'm not really convinced that there much thought has gone into design. I'd like to jump in there. <laughs> so, uh, just, just to add to your question, so we talked with the guys who did the model, Round Solutions, and they're actually very keen to package this and the Beagle board onto the same board. So they're keen to do that, so if, if, if we get it rocking, then we can surely have it done. So, I don't know if that fits in your pocket, but... It's in that, your lunchbox. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, you know, th this is an open phone, so it, 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 it can do many more things what your actual phone couldn't do. Maybe I can fit it on, in my home with my home equipment and saying that I'll send an SMS to my home and my home switches off my AC, switches off my heater, unlocks my door, 
things like that. So I don't want to fit it in my pocket, I'll actually like to fit it at my home, at my fridge. So you could use it with external sensors to create you know, a really specialist bit of hardware yeah, that isn't exactly. economical to do any other way. Exactly. You, you have to just think and whatever you want to do, you can do. Because you have an access to a modem, you have an access to a 3G network, and you have all those sensors which can be hooked with this thing. So, you know, with a connected device, you could create, I don't know, a weather station that did temperature and rain and sent the information up automatically to the internet without you having to do anything, be completely exactly. stable and open source. Exactly. There you are. <laughs> Great. And just catching my eye here, demo for MWC. You can see here, it looks like a phone call plan, browsing the internet, using Q, LCD and touchscreen, audio and video and playback. So that means if you're in Barcelona uh, in February, in the second week, you'll be able to go and see this uh, live, I guess, on the Symbian stand. And I've got to say, that's incredibly impressive for a project that's only a few months old and just shows the power of the platform. Uh, so the boot process is now going on for, this, uh, for, for the wild ducks. The uh, background stuff there, which I'm sure is lots of uh, technical uh, stuff that we should know about, but that doesn't really matter. This is going to appear on the screen here at the moment. We've got our white box at the moment, so we're just waiting for the uh, uh, the boot process to finish. And there's the uh, first basic bits of the UI up, as it's still in testing. So this is a great example of you know how this is, you know, from the grassroots ground up. It takes a little while to get these projects to uh, perfection, but that's the whole point. It's sort of cutting edge stuff here. So uh, it's now booted up into the uh, Symbian 2 uh, UI. You can see there's uh, showing the contacts application at the moment. And go back to the application screen. So that was great. That was the Wild Ducks project booting into Symbian 2. So a great proof of concept there. Stay tuned for more. All about Symbian and Mobile Industry Review.